Bubble! And I'm the highest DPS in the deck is AFK again. Fuck this shit. I'm hurting out. Healer, no! Haha, <laughs> just kidding. Not today, because today we fight. Yeah, let's go! <laughs> yeah, we got this. Man! How the fuck did you do all that top DPS and top heal? Well, my warrior peasant, stick around and I'll show you the ways of the holy paladin with talents, gear, rotation, covenants, and more! What? You didn't hear about our patrons? They are the holiest of them all! You too can be a holy pal uh, Patreon. Just check the description down below and we will infuse you with the light of all the videos you need to see and the uh, other goodies. You will find out about everything in the link down in the description below. Don't wait any longer. Accept our blessing in your life. Transition. What are we? The embodiment of light and peace. What do we do? We heal others using the holy light, bless them and bring harmony to the group. What we need? Crusaders might to hit these damn fools with more shocks and kindness. Don't forget kindness so we can heal others more. You guessed it, Crusaders might will be the more popular pick in all situations for the glimmer build while also being a bit easier to use. It will be the best excuse to why you hit the targets instead of healing with flash of light like the priest or the shaman does. It will make Crusader Strike reduce the cooldown of your Holy Shock, meaning more shocks equals more glimmers equals more heal and damage. Light Hammer will be the alternative for the non-glimmer build, as long as you can make that tank keep those mobs in and the same goes for your DPS friends. It is a good instant AoE healing and damage on a 1 minute cooldown, but can also bring a lot of tears if the tank moves exactly when you use it. The last option, Bestow Faith, is better than Crusader's Might for the Glimmer build because of the healing output. An extra holy power generator that will heal your target after 5 seconds on a 12 second cooldown. This is a very good addition to your healing toolkit. Unfortunately, Bestow Faith hasn't seen the love it deserves in higher content because having to wait for 5 seconds for the heal to pop can lead to overhealing and is a long wait for a holy power you would instantly need, plus it's another button to use as opposed to the passive functionality of Crusader's Might. In the next row, Judgment of Light will be your default pick, a passive that will make your Judgment place a debuff on the target and heal your allies for the next 25 successful attacks on it. It's the most mana efficient heal on this row and you will see everyone and their mom using it. On the utility row, every option is viable. Blinding Light is usually the default pick in case of CCable ads. You will blow up with lights in a 10 yard radius, blinding all foes around and interrupting them. Repentance will be another good CC, especially when the group wants to skip. On a 15 second cooldown, you can CC one mob without getting into combat. If none of the above suits you, then Fist of Justice will take the cake. A passive that will make you stun more often with your Hammer of Justice, provided you use it on cooldown. This role will come down to personal preference or what your group requires, so coordinate to know exactly what you need. On the level 35 row, you will pick Rule of Law as default for raiding. It will make your arms so long that you can reach that pesky hunter that's always hanging out away from the group because he too cool for mechanics. <laughs> it will make your heals reach target 60 yards away while also increasing the reach of your mastery and it has two charges. As a Mythic Plus counterpart, we have Unbreakable Spirit. 30% cooldown reduction to your Divine Shield, Divine Protection and Lay on Hands can save your group and yourself more often than you would think. Works better in dungeons as the range from the Rule of Law would normally not be needed in those situations. Next, we have Divine Purpose as the default all-around talent. A passive that gives your Holy Power abilities a 15% chance to make the next Holy Power ability free and 20% more powerful. A simple talent that synergizes very well with the talent on the next row and is very mana efficient. But this comes at a cost, and RNG is that cost. If you don't want to pay that cost, you can go with Holy Avenger. Very good in Mythic Plus, it will make your Holy Power Generator generate 3 Holy Power instead of 1 for 20 seconds. With great burst potential, the only downside of this talent is the long 3 minute cooldown, but I guess the Vampy Pallies will take more advantage of this. 
Lastly, Seraphim is the strongest damage wise, but considering the lack of holy power generation that Holy has compared to the other Pali specs, it's usually not the best choice here. But many people seem to go with it in a Mythic Plus situation, so uh, feel free to pick whatever you find suits you best on this talent row. On the second to last row, we will find Awakening as the best and easiest pick. It will make Light of Dawn and Word of Glory have a chance to give you Avenging Wrath for 10 seconds. Considering you will almost all the time dump your holy power on these two spells, you will have a very nice uptime on wings. And finally, we have the last talent row, the creme la creme, which defines your build. Glimmer of Light is a very good option in all situations, especially if you are a Kyrian. It will make your holy shock leave a glimmer on your target and it will deal damage or heal your ally every time you will use holy shock. Works very well with the Divine Toll Kyrian ability, making you spread the love almost instantly. For the vampy boys, Beacon of Faith will be a very good alternative for raiding. A second beacon will be very useful, especially in situations where you have both tanks or two targets that have a high amount of damage intake. For once, we cannot recommend simming. <laughs> I guess you can for the damage factor if you like. And what better way to introduce yourself to the wonders of simming than checking out our sim videos. There's one for healers as well. But since we are healers, there will be a choice of stats depending on the content you do. Intellect will be the big daddy stat in all situations, so the highest level usually is the better choice. Moving forward, if you have to choose, then for rating you will go with haste on top, followed by mastery, then versatility, and lastly crit. Pair this with a Shock Barrier Legendary and you will be the King of Heals, even in M+. And speaking of M+, the recommended stats that you should go for are still Intellect, Haste, then Verse, then Crit, and all of them are very close to each other, while Mastery is pretty much known. For your weapon, the Enchant of choice will be Celestial Guidance because Intellect is King, as we have found out earlier. Eternal stats enchant on your chest if you feel comfortable with your mana, else use the Eternal Bonds, one for a little less intellect but 6% more mana pool. Don't forget your heavy desolate armor kit for that extra tankiness and you will almost be ready to smack some ass and heal with sass. <laughs> for your cloak, use Fortified Leech because Leech can be triggered from both healing and damage dealing, so no wonder why it's the best, because you know, more heals. Eternal Intellect on your braces and you will eternally heal better, huh? <laughs> Fill those sockets with the Quick Jewel Cluster Gems and use the Tenet of Haste Enchant on rings because more haste equals faster heals and so a live group is a happy group. In case an alchemist asks, tell them you prefer the Spectral Flask of Power for the extra intellect it provides in every situation. And for the potions, tell them about Potion of Spectral Intellect because intellect makes you smarter. I wish I knew that when I downloaded my dating app. No, Grinder, go back! Or you can also go with Potion of Spiritual Clarity to replenish your much needed mana during the fight. Even as a healer, you will need to oil your weapon to make it easier for Nevermind. This time, use Embalmer's Oil. This baby will heal you when you heal or deal damage for a portion of your HP, and if you are already at full HP, it will be transformed into a shield. If you are hungry, especially during raids or M, go for Feast of Gluttonous Hedonism or the Intellect or get Tenebrous Crown Roast Aspect for all your hasty needs. Covenants, the Class Order Halls of Shadowlands, the place where you and your buddies will hang out the most while waiting for that new patch and expansion to drop. And by buddies, I mean one subtly rogue, and by new expansion, I mean I don't want to play Final Fantasy. As a holy paladin, you will find yourself choosing between the blue da boo dee da boo die and the vampy boys. As to why you would choose one and not the other, we can have a 10 whole year debate with your mother. Ah, rhymes. But for the purpose of this video, we will recommend Kyrian if you are starting out. Firstly, for the best spells in the game, Divine Toll, a one minute cooldown that you can choose to damage or kill up to five targets with. And secondly, the signature ability in Summon Steward that will provide you with a file of serenity and sing for you. An improved version of Hellstone that removes all diseases, poisons, curses and bleeds from you and has three charges. In this case, you will want Pelagos when raiding with three potency conduits for the burst of healing he will provide. 
with Mastery being one of your best stats in this situation, you will get a bunch from Pelagos because of traits like Combat Meditation and Better Together. Pair these with the defensive slash offensive nature of Newfound Resolve for the intellect and stamina it provides. <gasps> Plus, let go of the past will give you magic damage reduction. So, yeah. And everyone will be your friend in raids. So, you know, it works out. And then plus, you will mainly use Forge Light, Optimus Prime, Mechanicos, Autobots, Roll Out. Not you, Multiboxers. God damn it, all the time. The two potency conduit path it provides, combined with the damaging nature of this Soulbind, will make it very much desirable in M. So, with traits like Bronze Call to Action, which will summon Brasina to knock down your enemies down, down. damage and heal your allies for 30 seconds. Soul Glow Spectrometer is another good trait that will bring you a percentage damage or healing for 15 seconds. And lastly, Effusive Anima Accelerator will make your Divine Toll do extra damage to your targets and make it a 40 second cooldown according to the number of enemies you hit. As for the Venthyrs, yes, yes, representing our homeland and culture. The Vampires will bring you Ashen Hollow for 4 minutes cooldown. Wow! The longest out of every class abilities, but it is worth the wait. This ability will be the most desired, especially in high-end mythic rating or pushing mythic plus keys because of the damage burst it provides. The Door of Shadow signature ability that comes with the vampire nature can be useful for a little extra mobility it provides when teleporting around, but it's not very wow. You will want to pick Theotar the Mad Duke in every situation. The three potency conduits path will provide you with a bunch of useful traits. Soothing Shade, the bread and butter of the Soulbind, will provide you with mastery as long as you can stay in the shade of his umbrella. Ella, Ella, eh, eh, eh. I should be a singer, what am I doing here? Token of Appreciation is a trait that will make you say thank you to the ones that use beneficial magic or healing abilities on you during the fight, sending them a shield in their direction. Life is but an appetizer trait will give you 60 speed and avoidance as long as you have the well-fed buff so as long as you don't fuck up, you will have 100% uptime on it. And finally, Party Favors, the last trait that comes with the Duke, will make you visit him for tea on a daily basis. Why? Because manners and the 4 hour buff you will get, of course. If you will follow the paths recommended by us before, then you will find yourself needing the use of Ringing Clarity, the potency conduit, as a Kyrian. For the large damage or healing burst potential it has, it will give you a chance to cast 3 extra holy shocks on your main target. Hollow Discernment is the Venthyr counterpart potency conduit. It will heal the lowest ally inside it and damage the enemies within it for an extra amount. As the second potency conduit, you will want Focused Light for the Shock Barrier legendary users because of the extra critical chance it provides to Holy Shock. Or go for Untempered Dedication if using Marauds Dying Breath legendary. This conduit will increase the damage and healing of Light of the Martyr by an amount stacking up to 5 times. And as a third potency conduit, go for Adaptive Armor Fragment. It will provide you with an intellect increase for 15 seconds with a 30 second cooldown when you are healed by another player. As for the Endurance Conduits, the Condensed Animosphere will be the most commonly used in raiding scenarios. It will heal you every time you take damage, for a percentage of your maximum health, on a 10 second cooldown. Shielding Wards is another Endurance Conduit you can use more commonly in Mythic Plus. It will grant you a shield whenever you cast Word of Glory. And the third contender for these slots, the Golden Path Conduit, will work well when you can stay in your Consecration. Consecration will heal you every second as long as you stay in it. In the Finesse Department, we will have Lights Barding. Why? Because Mobility! As a wheelchair class, to have extra time on your Divine Steed will be a must in every situation. For your second option, go for Echoing Blessings, a Finesse Conduit that will bless your target even more when you bless with your Bless on Blessing them. It will make your Blessing of Freedom provide movement speed while Blessing of Protection and Sacrifice will confer damage reduction. Blessings! In our Trinket slot, you will find yourself using for and from the raiding scene, the Shattered Orb of Torment. One of the best trinkets because of the high amount of mastery it provides for 40 seconds. The Titanic Ocular Gland is another very good trinket from the raid. It will increase your highest secondary stats rating even more as long as you stay above 50% HP. As alternatives from the M plus scene, we will use trinkets like the Unbound Changeling from Mists of Tyrannicide for the controlled type of stat proc it can provide. 
And lastly, Soul Letting Ruby from the Theater of Pain will be a pain to get because DPSs want it as well, but the critical strike it provides will make all the pain worth it. The Unholy Chaos Bane shard set still holds the medal for best healing domination set. Pair it with Rev and Cure for the extra leech and the shield they provide. Then you will be ready for raiding. You can also go for the Blood Transfusion Blood set in case you want to bring a little more damage to the table. Pair it with Cure and Zed for extra shield and damage slash healing. And again, you are ready for raiding. We think because of the blood nature of this set, the Vampire Boys will surely love this more. Hmm. Because blood. They suck it. Moving on, for Mythic Plus you can go for the 3 damage shards, Core, Beck and Diz. Add Zed or Kier and Rev to your arsenal because Leech and you will be the best contender for the top spot. In the Legendaries department we have two choices. I want to heal more Legendaries with a Shock Barrier Legendary, the best all around one, build it on your legs and it will make your Holy Shock protect your target with an extra shield based on the healing it provided on a maximum of 5 targets. For our vampires, we will have Murad's Dying Breath for healing. Build it on your ring and this legendary will make your Light of Dawn increase the healing of Light of Martyr and make Light of Martyr heal through the Beacon of Light as well. With this legendary, your Light of the Martyr damage to you will be dealt over 5 seconds instead of instantly. For the Need More Damage legendaries, you will have the Mad Paragon, used mostly by our vampire Holodins. It will make Hammer of Wrath deal 30% more damage and increase the duration of Avenging Wrath by one second. Pair that with Ashen Hollow and DPS will ask you if you are sure you are in healing gear. Red Who? And your second choice in the damage department is Vanguard's Momentum. Craft it in the boot slot and you will get one extra Hammer of Wrath. <laughs> Yay! Plus 4% holy damage stacking up to 3 times for 10 seconds. For our healing buddies, we won't have any specific weapons with effects from the raid. The best thing you can get for the weapon is a one-hander with the best stats like Exacting Mind Slicer from Painsmith and Guard of the Sunder Defender as your shield for the extra eye level it provides being dropped by Sylvanas. Else go for 252 weapon or shields you get from the vault. Since you are healing, you cannot really have a defined rotation, so you will have to adapt and know more what to prioritize when needed. As such, we will recommend to spend Holy Power on Word of Glory for single target and Light of Dawn for AoE. Use Divine Toll if at 0 Holy Power, cast Holy Shock, then Crusader Strike if at 2 charges, spend Infusion of Light procs depending on situation, Holy Light preferred but if more healing is needed then Flash of Light also works. Cast Holy Light and finally Light of Martyr. For the single target damage you can provide to the group, you will prioritize using Avenging Wrath on cooldown followed by Hammer of Wrath, then Judgment followed by Divine Toll as your next ability on the list, then Holy Shock, Crusader Strike after and finally Consecration. In multi-target situations you will prioritize the following, Consecration first followed by Avenging Wrath, Divine Toll next then Hammer of Wrath if you can cast it, Judgment on the main target after you dump your Holy Power on Shield of the Righteous if no healing is needed. Otherwise, Holy Shock on as many targets as possible with Glimmer and use Crusader Strike on the lowest priority target that's available to hit. Special thanks to the Hammer of Wrath Discord channel for the feedback they provide and all of the information they have compiled for you and me and everybody interested in learning Holy Paladin and you can also increase the knowledge of your Holy Paladin by going down into the advanced sections of the Discord. A special thanks to Myth as well for giving us the feedback for our research and making sure that the information that we give you is top notch. Thank you Myth, you rock! And a special thank you to the patrons who are supporting this uh, video. Thank you once again, guys. Even saying it twice a video doesn't seem like it's enough, but we really do appreciate it. We couldn't have done this without the support of everybody, both on Patreon, Discord, Twitch, everywhere as well. So thank you very much. And if you, the viewer, want to check our Patreon page for some goodies and some things that you might find enjoyable or maybe to your liking, check the link down below. If it's for you, if it's for you. If not, then that's fine. It's not required, but we greatly appreciate it. Thank you for watching the video. See you next time. I've been loving it then, I still love it now. Still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. Getting better every day, let me show you how. Cause still, I play wow. Still, I play wow. It's getting harder to stay, but at the end of the day, it's a guilty pleasure, so just log in and play. Whether it's classical retail, I'ma do a slash bow. Still, I play wow.